So, okay, so yesterday what we have tried is we just created a simple uh, a Spring Boot application and we created a simple yeah. example. So previously we did not try it with any database examples. And now what we tried yesterday, we all we did is we created a database entity. So, and through the entity, we communicated to the database and then we got the data back as well. First, we need to uh, connect the database and well, uh, I'll show you. Application. First, I need to start the server. So database start and Apache start. Okay, so once it is done, let's go back and just try post and then PHP my admin. And there we go. So this is a database which we are using right now, and we have a table called student which contains some information. Okay. So now what we tried yesterday, uh, there are a few other things we tried. In the application properties, we did add some information, which is relevant to the which database I'm trying to connect and what is the uh, server, which is in our case, local host, and what is the database and what is the port number and the username and the password. But if you're using Oracle database, the connection URL will be uh, slightly different. Yeah. Okay, that seems we are using MySQL. This is the way we need to provide the URL. Now, okay, so normally when you're communicating the database, what you do, you have to create a uh, database connection, JDBC connectivity. But are we doing anything here? No. But how it is communicating the database? Database. Yeah. Through the JPA, Java Persistent API. Yes. So that will internally creating the database communication because it has a connection information. So it automatically creates the connection for us. Right. So when you start the application, right, the connection will be created and it will be available for us to use. And then, Another in important thing, okay. So now we have created something like a student.java. It is just a normal Java file, but how it is able to communicate to the database, okay? Because Java is the object oriented and uh, or I mean, database is a relational database. Okay, both are entirely different entity and our normal Java cannot communicate to the database operation. Okay, that is the reason we created a database entity. So even though it's a simple normal class, we are converting that into an entity. So it will act as a normal Java class. At the same time, it acts as an instance for the, the database table as well. So if you do something to the student, what will happen eventually? It will impact the student table. Okay, okay that is the reason when we are trying to get the uh, get or uh, find all, it is giving us all the student information. Okay. okay. So you, you, I mean, you might not exactly clear what we have done, what we have done, but I'm asking is, so we did something and we created a controller from the controller. I did something like this and we are just calling some method and I created something called repository and I have some student entity. So first of all, I'm sure there must be a lot of questions. Okay, so what is it in you have in your mind? So there are such, hey Arun, you're doing something which I'm not able to relate how it is working. Yes, uh, I have, I don't, know, I don't know what is that repository? Is that already created or is that stored? How you call this? Okay, so you understand the purpose of the student <laughs> class, right? Because right. it is a represent the Java object student at the same time, it represents the our database table name student as well. Okay, so how it how this entity will be able to communicate to the student because in application at property we have the connection information. Yeah. When you start the application, it will create the database connection. The connection will be available for us to use. So which means the connection is open now. The student can communicate to the student table. Okay, so okay through the entity, I have the table name. So through this table name, this entity will communicate to this table, Oracle, MySQL database. But what about the fields? Okay, so we have the uh, different variables here, right? So this variable, 
this variable belongs to this column in the database. Okay, yes. see here, uh, ID, first name, email, last name, mobile. So each column represents something. So this particular variable represents the column name. In case if the column name is different, you can modify the column name also, not a problem at all. Okay, but whenever you create a database entity, it must you need to provide the primary key because you need to tell the entity, hey, this is a table I'm trying to communicate and this is a primary key for the column. Yes. Right? So now I know how to create a, a database entity which will act as a Java object at the same time which will communicate to the database as well. Okay, so now who will do the, the querying part, fetching the information from the database? For example, if you want to get the student information, you have to write something like select star from student, right? Yes. But we are not doing it, but it is working. How it is working? That is where we need to use the repository. So here we annotated the interface as a repository. Okay, so student repository, an interface which I created, which extends the JPA repository. So for the JPA repository, you need to provide what is the table name and what is the primary key data type. So student is my database entity and the primary key is an integer there. Yes. Okay. So if you go to JPA repository, you can see find all method. See, this is a find all method which you are trying to call from our student controller. So student repository, I created an object reference for that and I'm using that to call the find all. Okay, so this is the method is getting called and this internally will create the query, select star from that particular table. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So now, okay, then now, so we, we know the purpose of JPA repository, which means you are cre if you're creating a multiple database entities, which means you have to create the repository as well. Yes. So if you're creating a user, there, user, a user, a DTO, or just like the student at Java, you wanted to create another uh, Java file for communicating to some other database, some other table. For example, user wants to communicate to the user table. So you have to create another repository saying like user repository, extend the JPA repository, and here the user table and what is the primary key for that particular table. Yes. Okay. okay. And now, so here, we have student repository and a repo. And why we have an auto wired here? So normally whenever we create an object, we normally does this, remember? Yes. So we will create something like a same similar thing. Right. Normally this is how we will create an object, okay? okay. But here, what we are actually doing is through auto wire. So when you're using auto wire, what will happen is when you start your application, when you start your application, it will create the reference for you. You don't need to create it. So that will dynamically bind out. It will create a reference object for you and your application will use that particular reference. I'll show you how it is happening as well. Okay. So now I'm saving this. And then what I'm going to do is let me try to start the server first, and then I'll show you what exactly is happening. Okay, the server has been started. So now what I need to do is, there are a lot of information is displayed here. Normally, it will not display it. Since in application and properties, we make the logger level as a debug. So it's giving all the information student repository. Somewhere here, it will create the reference for us. Required class, let me try to find out. Let me check the reference first. And 
so limit okay don't limit try and close let me stop it and run it again okay do you see here one second let me minimize this a little bit so you can see it see here in this line number let me copy this line maybe i can copy it from this line let's see See what is happening here? Identify a candidate component. I mean, identify candidate component class. It is the package where we have the code available, target classes, and student repository dot class. Okay. Okay. So it is. See, we created a repository dot Java, right? Now, if you see, it's compiled and it is created a reference for that, and this reference will be used for further use. Okay. okay. So yes. now. You can, you can, if you want, you can even uh, try find even further as well. Here, can you see? Creating instance for student repository. So what do you mean by creating instance? Creating an object. Oh, okay. Okay, so it is creating an object for us. And that object will be used when you're calling repo dot. Normally, if you want to call a method, available in a particular um, class or interface, you have to create an object first. Then only you can call the method. But here I'm not creating an object, but how the method is getting called? Right. Because the object is already created, but we can't see it here. You have to go through this uh, logs to see that. So yeah. that is the reason the method is running. So now let me show you what will happen if I don't do that. Let me stop it. So what do you think is going to happen now? It will not call, right? I mean, it is not auto wired to get that. It will not auto wired, but what will happen if I try to run it? If I try to run it, it, it not identify what is repo. It says internal server error. We need to go error. back to the logs to see what is error. See, we are trying to access the find all method which is available from the repo, but yes. there is no instance. We did not create an object for it. Right. So if you yeah. create new something like that, then only the object will be available. Now the object available, not available. Obviously, it will end up with some null pointer exception or something. Yeah. See, null pointer exception in the line number student controller get all students line number 20. Right. I'm here, I'm trying to call the find all method from the repo, and there is no instance available at all. I mean, the object is not created, so I cannot call the method. So now I'm yeah. going to stop it again. I added the auto wire now. Now let's try to do it again, and we'll see what's going to happen. Started. Now I'm going to run it. Now the output is coming. Right. Got So yeah. basically, you need to understand what is student and what is student repository and what is controller and uh, what is the purpose of using the auto wiring. Yeah. Okay. Auto wiring means you instead of you, the Spring uh, Boot uh, framework itself is creating an object. That is called loosely coupling. The object will be created based on the need. Yeah. Okay. So now, whatever we tried so far, it is just trying to get a all the student okay. information. So we want to find a specific student information. How we can do that? Okay. So I'm going to write a method first, just a signature. So public, and I want to return the student object. Okay, so find student and the input is going to be student ID. Okay, for example, int student ID. Let's see what is it available. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, let's try with any of them. Nevertheless, now I'm getting an input here and I'm getting an input as a student ID. Now, what I need to do is we have to find this. What we can do is a repo dot instead of find, you can use find by ID. So since your student ID is a primary key, right? Yes. 
you can pass the primary key to get the information from the table but if you want to fetch based on the names we have to write a query okay so here dot get so the reason what happening here why i'm returning as a get here normally when you're calling the database method it is giving you a optional of student so optional is a new uh, class added in the java 8 so if only the data it contains then okay maybe maybe i can show you that how it can be done so normally what will happen is here it will create it will return us <coughs> optional of okay so now what you can do is the optional if you want to get the data from the optional we don't want the optional of student we want the student information so what i will do is if okay student dot is if or is present so then what i'm going to do is a return student sorry return student dot get which will give you the actual student object okay so or else you can simply return null so if you're returning null which means the student information is not available yes. okay so now this this is just a simple method it will not do anything you, can, you cannot call the method do we have any resources for this or any address no so we have to add the address again get mapping we have to provide some resource that like uh, fetch student and also i need to provide the information also what is the id i'm going to pass so i'm passing id here so we are passing the id through the path right yeah. so we have to tell the uh at the api so i'm sending the information through the path so take it from that so we have to use the path variable yeah and so path variable and the name equal to id because that is the identifier in the yes. url so now we created a method let's see whether it is able to pull the information so let's say i have one so let me try to add access i mean access trying to access four so if I provide the four as an input, I need to get the John and the the, uh, the information about the John, right? So yes. now let's go back and copy this. First of all, we need to stop the server and then run it again because we made the change, right? Right. So now let's try it again. Let's run it again. Okay, it started. Now all I need to do is go back and modify fetch student slash let's try four. Okay. So when I try four, what we are supposed to get? We are supposed to get only oh, this data. Yeah. yeah. See? No, we are getting only John. Yeah. John. Right? Same like that, we can delete or add also, right? Correct. So, okay. but what kind of methods which we need to use? Because I'm just retrieving the information, so I use get mapping. But if you want to add something, if you want to add a new student, then which means you have to use the post, post. method. Post, yeah. Okay. So now, okay, we tried all, get all students, get a specific student. Now we need to know how to add a student. Right. So now what I'm going to do, we're going to write a post, post mapping. mapping. So, and we're going to name it as a add student. Okay. So, so add student have a multiple data in it, right? Yes. So what we want to do is I don't want to send the user, I mean, the student information through the uh, URL. I will pass it through the request body. Okay. Yes. So public. So I'm going to send the student. So I'll add the, I will store the student and i'll return the same data back to the user saying like it is done so yeah. add student or save 
student and the input is going to be student and for now i'm adding the null we can modify it later okay so now we have the address and we have the student all we need to do is just use the repo dot you see the same method you can see yes. we use the student we already getting the student now the thing is it is just a normal student object it is coming from the user but we need yeah. to tell the api from where i'm getting the request information whether it is coming from path or path param or request body so this is coming from request request body e okay got it yeah, no. body so now it will not look for the path it will look for the request body and get this one information and store it and then return the same information okay, okay. but how in the database how many are student information we have only four only four, four. right yeah. so now yes. what we're gonna do is let's go back and copy the url add student and i'm going to like um so here into the get all students i'm gonna use the add student and this is going to be post method and we need to have a body also this is the one right control c yeah. and then let's go to the post here body raw and uh, sorry raw and we need to choose what kind of data i'm gonna pass i'm gonna pass it to json yes. first of all let's go back to see how many values are available here yes. uh here we have okay so yes. first name email last name everything is there but what we are passing actually we are only passing the first name and the last name we need to pass the email as well yes. correct yeah Direct first we need to pass the email as well email okay email and mobile <coughs> so then that is the last one which we need to do so email id is going to be test at gmail.com and mobile is going to be one two three okay so why is still there Just name last the R V W. Oh, okay, that's a problem. No. So now we pass to one two three, or maybe mobile number is equal to. Mm, okay. So now what we can do is we have all the information. We don't need to use the ID here because when you store as a new user, it will automatically create an ID for us. Okay. So now I'm, when I'm passing this, maybe I can pass the what I can say is maybe I can pass the schema. and i can say the last name is bind now i'm going to hit it again first send so for not for it, it says uh, the method is not available so add student yes right we added a new method but we did not run stop the server and run stop it the server and run because yeah. or else the change will not reflect okay right okay so now let's do it again let's go back and run it again Okay, so now done. Let's go. Okay, done. Okay, now let's go back and try it again. Five hundred. Five hundred means which something is wrong, some exception in the code. So now we have to go back and see what is the error here. Oh. Column first name cannot be null. Okay, so it clearly says something is wrong. Yeah. The first name cannot be null. So let's see whether we are passing the first name or not. Are we using the first name? Mm -hmm. First name is we are passing it from here, right? Let's yeah, go back yes. to the student <laughs> and see. Yes, right. Because the see the how we are passing it first name, but here I'm using first to capital letter A. Yeah. And okay. Okay. Yes. See now, see this has to be very important. You remember okay. because that is how right. we identify the JSON to Java. Yeah. So first name, last name, email, and mobile. Email and mobile. Yeah, that we are good. Oh, yes. Let's try it again. See now we got the response back. Yes. yes. Which means two hundred. Okay. Which means success. So now what we need to do? We have to go back to the database. How many informations are available so far? One, two, three, four. Right. Yes. Now I'm yes. going to refer the student again. Now, do you see that there is a new one has been added here? 
Yes. Okay. So this is how you need to okay. add a student. Okay. Yes. Sir. But in case uh, you wanted to update uh, something. Yeah, phone number. Phone number or something. So how we gonna do that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So for that, what you gonna do is, um, we will pass the ID and we will pass the we'll pass the ID and what is the mobile number needs to be updated. That is our requirement. Okay. So five is the ID and and what is the value needs to be modified in the mobile. Okay. It's can you try to write a method for that? Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, so we are going to do an update, right? Right. So, at, so what kind of mapping you're going to use? Update, is there any? Yeah, okay, update. Not update. Uh, <clears throat> okay, for update, we need to use put mapping. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have to provide and update. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a method of public student. and again student because I want to update the student and I'll I want you to send back the updated information yes. to me. Student and update okay. student. Okay, so then what are the information you're gonna get it? For now, I'm gonna return null. Return null. Okay, so then uh, let's say we will get the information from the body. Okay. Or, okay, so maybe what I'm trying to do is I'm getting the data from the path itself. So I want to update this ID and the data needs to be updated is mobile, mobile. number. Mobile. <clears throat> So now what I can do is I have to provide two informations here, right? So int ID comma int mobile. mobile. So from where they are coming from? I have to provide path. Yeah, right? yeah, path yes. So name. And it is coming from the ID. Hi. So I have to do the same for the next one as well. So now, so okay, now the things are getting interrupted. Let me stop it. So if you want to update, what is the first thing which you need to do? First delete and then rewrite. No, you're doing an update. Why do you need to delete? Okay. Okay, let me, uh, let me do it right away, okay? So now... If you want to update any specific uh, student information, you need to, you are passing a value student ID as one. You will update it. If you're passing student ID 10, what will happen? It do we have, create, no, we don't, don't have any happen. student. So it will yes. simply create an error. The student yeah, is not available. So we have to handle that also. So even before updating the data, we have to get the student first. Okay, okay, so we have the ID, right? Do you remember the way how you are getting the student C? Yes. Control okay. C. And here I'm going to create that ID. So through that, I'm getting in a student ID. So I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to perform the same thing. So if student is existing, which means student is present, then you will do the update. Okay. okay. Else. We are going to be throw an exception. Exception saying like student record not available. Now, so in case if the student is existing, what we need to do? We need to get the student. Okay. So here, student to you is equal to 
So if the student is present, we will get the student. Get the the student. So now what I'm going to do is we already have the mobile number, right? So stu dot set mobile. So we have the new mobile information which is coming from the user, right? Yes. And then what I'll do, I'll just simply use our repo dot save method. And I'm going to use the student here. And I will return. Return report at save. Okay. So now, so if the student is available, it will update or else it will throw an exception saying like the student information is not available. Not. Okay. Got it? Okay. So now let's go back. We have to start the server because we made some changes. Let's copy this. So the new method which is going to be put mapping, right? So I'm going to modify the yeah. method put and I'm going to modify this as well. Update. So update. So what is the uh, ID we're going to update? Five, right? That is a new one And the mobile yes. number, tell me your mobile number. Let's try that. I tried some random, right? Yeah. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So previously yeah. we tried some different number. Now we are going to try this. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now let's try send. See, Kima, Bindu, and the mobile number. This is the updated mobile number. Okay. Right. You go back to the database. In the database, what is the existing? 9876547, oh. like that. If I refresh right. it again, now you see the updated okay. mobile number. You see now how it is working? Yes, got it. So yeah. we tried get, and we tried to get all, we tried to update, and we tried to add. Now we need to try the delete as well. Oh. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Instead of like a uh, save student or something like this. Let's okay, we need to try some other scenario as well, right? So what if I try to use 10? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So internal server error. And if you go back and check your logs, you can see student record is not available. Okay. This is the error message which we are sending from our code. Yeah. Got it? So now let's try another method where we can do some at delete mapping and I'm gonna use delete and I'm gonna pass using the path ID. Okay. So here what I'm gonna do is public. We don't need to return anything, void delete student and the input is going to be this. Even here also, when we are doing something like this also, before even you delete the student, you need to make sure the student is available in the first place. Right. So we're gonna have the similar code here. So if the student is present, then what we're gonna do is, you're not doing any updations here. So all we're gonna do is, instead of save, report dot, delete, and the entity I'm trying to delete is, Student title. Student. Okay. If the student is existing, I'm retrieving the student and then I'm returning it. And yes. I'm deleting it now. So here in case the student is not present, I'm gonna throw some exception saying like record not available or student record is not available. <clears throat> so we made a change, then we need to stop the server and then start it one more time. So let's try to delete the student number five. Control C, Control V and it's going to be delete one. And I'm going to try to delete one. Delete, send. 
200 which means success yeah, yeah sir and the reason there is no response this is a void method the only way we how we can identify the data is successfully deleted go back to the database still we have five right i'm going to refer yeah. the student the fifth one is gone you got it got it. yes so now let's go back and try something like i'm trying to delete the five again okay, okay. so now what will happen if i do that there is no five right you will get error it will throw us an error yes. so if you go back to the code and see what went wrong it will again saying the student record is not available not available if you are not able to update it yes Mm -hmm. uh okay that is done the delete mm -hmm. student one second yeah <clears throat> okay so see in our project also pretty much everything comes under whatever we did but the implementation yeah. might be different So you could, you could have seen the get mapping, post mapping, put mapping. You you should be able to yes. see it in your project as well. Yes. Okay. So all you need to do is how these things are working. Okay. Okay. So what I want you to do is, um, I think we can stop here today for today, right? Yeah. Sure. So the thing is, I you have to try the same. Okay. Yeah, I'll try. Okay. So what I'm gonna tell you is what I'm I will share the program. Okay. Let me. Oh. Let me share the project just for your reference. Yes. So I'm gonna zip it. Okay, compressed from the application. Okay. So copy. Let me see whether I'm able to share it. Is there a way where we can share the file here? You can try it to the chat. Yes, I am able to. I just uh, shared you the zip file. Download it right now. Can you download it now? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, once you download, maybe then because once you end the session, right, you won't be able to download the zip. I guess. Oh. Let me know once you downloaded the zip file. Yeah, done. Okay, okay, fine. So you can use it for the reference. You can just okay. have a look at it, and you can try to do, try to replicate the same. Don't copy paste it. Type the code. Yes. Okay, and try yes. to do it, and see. Okay. We'll and then we'll connect tomorrow. I mean, maybe Monday. If you have any doubts, you can call me over the weekends. Yeah, sure. And okay. Yeah. See you then. Okay. Thank you. Bye.